the FOV setting in Escape from Tarkov change camera recoil? Uh, yes, but probably not in the way you think it does. The left is 50, the right is 75, and he also had a couple chevrons at the bottom, so we have an idea for kind of like the starting center line for the weapons and the scopes, okay? Now right away, those look pretty different from one another, eh? But they're also uh, very similar in some ways that um, might not be immediately apparent. I mean, first up, if we take a look at something like this, the 75 FOB, that muzzle seems like it's kicking much higher. But if we look a little bit closer, here's where things kind of start to get interesting. On the right-hand side, pay I know it's a little bit fuzzy, but uh, pay attention to where the reticle is pointing. The shot breaks, boom. It sparks and impacts right where the reticle was indicated. I mean, and it happens again later on. Let's see. Like right here. So there's the reticle on the, kind of on that back wall. The shot breaks, boom, there's the puff of smoke. You see that? There's the impact for the puff of smoke. So it hit right where the reticle was pointing. But look at that front sight post, eh? It definitely looks like the muzzle is drifted further to the right than the reticle. Now that doesn't seem to square up with what we think we know about Tarkov. After all, the bullet is supposed to come from the trajectory of the muzzle. Where the muzzle is pointing, that's where the bullet comes out and initially starts traveling. So if the muzzle appears to be further right than the reticle, shouldn't it be impacting where the muzzle is pointing? Not necessarily where the reticle is indicating? Hmm. Now, spoiler alert, I'm going to tell you what I think is happening. I think both are actually correct. You're going to say, oh, come on, Spec. Anyone with two eyes can clearly see that those are not in alignment with one another. I mean, the 50 FOV over there seems to stay rock solid. They seem to juke and jive together. So what the heck? I mean, look, 50 over there compared to this 75? Yep, I think they're both right. It's not necessarily a bug or a glitch, but rather an accurate depiction of what's going on behind the scenes. And there's the catch. Now, in real life, we would not expect that to happen. In real life, the 75 over there would more or less mirror what we're seeing on the 50. The front sight post would not drift further out. It would stay lock and stock together. But we're not dealing with real life here, are we? Or are we? Now, by the way, we can see that uh, this pencil, uh, my head is bigger than this pencil, right? But watch what happens when I start playing with position. If I put this pencil right up close to the camera, what do you see? It kind of looks as though whatever this blue thing is, is bigger than my head. Now watch what happens when I pull the pencil closer to me. And I'm, I'm right eye dominant, so you'll see this favor my right side at the end of this. Uh-huh. And here it is coming back. Hmm. <laughs> cool. Now watch this. I'll do the same type of thing, but I'll do it a little bit differently. I'm going to try to more or less keep the pencil in the same position as I move myself instead. Then as I come back in, now you might be saying to yourself, Spec, that's cool and all, but what does that have to do with what we just saw in Escape from Tarkov? Uh, turns out, everything. The dolly zoom is one of the most disorienting and flashy camera techniques of all time. And it shows up in some of the most beloved scenes in cinematic history. It's famous for its bizarre look, but the shot also teaches us a lot about filmmaking. It shows the different kind of lenses and how to use them, it enhances the emotion of a scene, and it can be used in subtle places you may not have even noticed. You may not have even noticed. You may not have even noticed. May not have even noticed. Yep, I think we're being dolly zoomed, but not the whole scene, just the camera that's responsible for the arms and the weapon of the player. 
because you see that's one of the cool tricks you can do with video games. You can have uh, lots of different cameras in the scene responsible for rendering different objects. And the dolly zoom itself is a pretty ingenious effect. As the camera moves, it does the opposite with its zoom. As the camera moves forward, it zooms away. And if the, as the camera moves back, it zooms in, right? And it serves a lot of different purposes, but uh, for ourselves in Escape from Tarkov, what it allows is it allows for the object that's in focus to retain um, its relative size to the full scene. And what's kind of cool is you're not doing it across the board, only in certain key situations where they feel it might be necessary. So you might have noticed in those two red backgrounded scenes I just showed, uh, when it's a flat top, uh, just irons or something, uh, they're not using a dolly zoom. So the weapon will kind of morph and stretch as we would expect with the wider FOVs. The only time it seems like they're, they start pulling in the dolly zoom is whenever a magnified optic is involved in some way. And that's why I included the hammer in some of those examples because I'm showing the difference as you go from the, the backup site to the main magnified optic. Uh, if you look really closely, you can see uh, the dolly zoom in action. Uh, but again, it's just to a small uh, little piece of um, what you're actually taking in in the whole game of Tarkov. It's just to that weapon. So it's kind of, it's really hard to kind of notice, but it's, uh, it's there. So given that the world FOV can be different from the, uh, let's call it the player camera or the weapon camera FOV, what does that mean for us in Escape from Tarkov? Well, it essentially means that two things can appear to be right at the same time. Now, I said I wanted to stick to physical objects for these demonstrations. Uh, and I did. I tried things. I tried our handy dandy pencil. I tried doing stuff with rulers uh, and like binder clips and having them slide and stuff like this. And I got pretty close to what I was wanting to do, but it uh, still wasn't very good. I mean, I need something stable. I need something kind of like rigid, something that has like, uh, let's say, consistent measurements, consistent alignment. And I found something. Now, before we all laugh at this together, Please give me a little bit of grace here and realize that uh, it's serving a purpose, okay? So without further ado, ta-da! Yep, we're doing it with Legos, baby. And not just any Legos, but my kids' Legos. And let's just say they're not into Batman. And on top of that, I wasn't really able to take many things apart. So I was dealing with a bunch of scraps. But I tell you, it was able to work. It came out quite well. So let's take a look, shall we? This is a top-down view. I want to show you kind of the stages we're going to go through here so you'll know what you're looking at when we get down uh, in the first person level. But so this is kind of like going to be a, a, a shooting range. And this will be uh, our shooter. I don't know who this caped guy is. I think he's some type of Star Wars character. But he's going to be the guy at the blocks taking shots. And you can kind of superimpose a weapon there to see what I'm kind of talking about. Um, but what we have, what this is going to be is if you imagine... Uh, this is the kind of the point of rotation, let's say, is at the grip. The blue long piece out here at the, at the front end is representing kind of like the firing arc. So I'm just exaggerating it so we can see it, but imagine, again, as we were seeing in the video, the muzzle is really swinging wide, left and right, okay? So this is, imagine this as a recoil, just how wide and left uh, it's swinging during its course of fire. And again, I've exaggerated big time just so we can see it. Okay, and let's imagine he has like, let's call it like an out-of-body experience, okay? So like as he's sitting there shooting the gun, the ghost of him comes out and steps and takes all these steps back. So while the real him is shooting the gun, we have essentially the ghost of him, right, or whatever you want to call it. And he's got these uh, binoculars and he's zooming in and looking at the prior shooting position. So again, to relate this back to the dolly zoom, he's changing his position, he's stepping away, and he's using his binoculars to zoom in, all right? So again, the dolly zoom effect. And here's what it kind of looked like in first person view, right? So this is first position. And you have to disregard kind of the bulky effect, um, but if you can just imagine these as being hard, crisp lines, right? That is the, that's what that width of an arc looks like from that, uh, from that first block position. And then the ghost comes out, right? Take step back, and now we're viewing it from the ghost. Same thing, have the plate, drop the plate, that's what that looks like. And then he raises up his binoculars, okay? So he's peering closer. Now, that is the, that, the width of that uh, blue bar again has not changed, yet from that further vantage point, it now appears to be wider, okay? 
But we can see that uh, it's still not looking quite right. I mean, because if he steps back and then he's zooming in, look at how goofy the background looks, right? So we're going to have to do some uh, movie magic and remove the background. <laughs> Ta -da -da -da. All right, so that is that is essentially kind of like an artistic rendition, right, of what it would look like to view further back shot, zoomed in, and then corrected for the background, corrected field of view uh, for the background, right? And this matches pretty well what we see in Tarkov, right? So the weapon is actually shooting this arc at the top, okay? While it appears to follow this bottom arc, it's a lot wider. So what does that mean? That means in practice, that's why you have the reticle position is going to stay true to the actual like hit positions of the weapon is how the reticle is tracking. Okay, but the weapon model itself is kind of uh, playing to its own tune in some ways, right? It's swinging a little bit wide because of um, this kind of forced perspective uh, dolly zoom distortion. Okay, now I have a little of a trick question for you. What do you think? Is going to happen for a laser. What's going to happen for the laser? Is the laser going to follow uh, the muzzle or is it going to follow the sight picture, the reticle? Let's see. Okay, what'd you guess? If you said that the laser would follow the sight picture, the reticle, uh, you're correct. So we can see I, I freeze, freeze framed a couple little areas here. We can see in this in this position, it will appear again that the front side post has drifted further to the right, and yet that laser tracks right in line with the point of impact. Uh, and same thing here, another one that's wide, and the laser is right on the dot. And a third one that shows it pretty well. We've got the front post wide right, the laser is right on it. So interesting, eh? All right, that's what I got for the dolly zoom. Uh, I never never thought I'd be doing kind of a stop motion uh, animation thing with my kids, but uh, it was pretty fun. Thanks for letting me do that. Um, I, ho I hope it made sense what I was trying to show. Eh? Um, and you can kind of see, maybe for those who have seen kind of the flip as a lie, it's kind of this, it's the same type of concept, right? This point of rotation is not just a vertical, but it's also all the recoils kind of uh, generated from that from that position, right? So um, you could see that maybe a quick a quick little illustration. Uh, would be let's say this is this is the let's say this is the player camera and this is the weapon right like as the two kind of share a common point of rotation they can kind of stay in sync right but as this head position drifts further back you'll uh, you'll see that they kind of start ah, if I can get it in the camera the right way they kind of start misaligning see what I'm showing there and again that mixed with kind of the perspective change is kind of what makes uh, kind of what makes it look a little bit goofy and something else I want to mention is uh, Often, anytime I see discussions surrounding a uh, field of view um, and scope sizes, vertical sizes, all that kind of stuff, it's kind of invariable that uh, people will start talking about uh, kind of wanting to have their cake and eat it too, right? They want to be able to have these huge wide monitors. They want to be able to play on this huge. Uh, they want to be. They want to be able to play on a, a higher FOV, um, and they just they don't want to have any drawbacks. But that's not really possible. And I want to show just a quick another little illustration here. One of my little, another one of my little illustrations here about why why that's a thing, right? See if I can, if I, see if I can do this justice real quick. So um, pretend that you are looking out at me like this is like you're the game looking out at me, right? So uh, a lot of people will say if once they get their their uh, their their field of view so wide or something that their their scope size becomes smaller, right? And then if you imagine. Um, like all these measurements, I mean, I'm just making something up here, but just picture, picture all these measurements inside a scope, right? Um, what they'll say is they'll say, well, uh, but it's so small, it's hard for me to see, right? So they want to have their scope become bigger, right? Take up a bigger portion of their screen. But when they, once they do that, what has to happen to these markings then, right? Well, if we want to stay true to what these markings represent, which is a, you know, reference out to the world. These are used to measure things, uh, bullet drop, 
width of torsos, heights of bodies, all that kind of stuff. It's it's a it's a it's a way to uh, kind of calculate things for shooting a weapon, right? So once once this become once the scope, ah, I'll see if I get it better. Once the scope becomes bigger, the question then is, okay, well, what do we do about the markings? Well, to stay uh, to again to keep that relationship going, you got to make the markings bigger, right? Okay, well now that the markings are bigger. Okay, well, what about that thing you're supposed to be measuring? Uh, what about that thing now that you're supposed to be measuring? Okay, well, we got to make that bigger so it all corresponds, right? Well, if you make that bigger, what do you what do you do about the surrounding bushes and stuff? Well, you got to make that bigger and everything. So the the deal is kind of like uh, once you understand that this is a matter of scale, right, and that distance and scale and all this kind of stuff relates to measuring and that scopes are a tool for measuring, right? Not only for sighting, but also for measuring and ranging. Um, that's where you kind of start seeing that you can't, there's no way you can start pulling on one string without having, without eventually getting the whole sweater, right? So that's my kind of, so uh, we got to keep that in mind. Uh, a decent visual for that, if you need something to kind of help you help you think about it, is if you think of anything anything involving like a force perspective, right? I pick this one because you see these all the time, right? Where uh, these people seem like you know they're bigger than the Leaning Tower of Pisa. One's kicking it over, one's holding it up, right? But you see that just like just like we described, it's all just a kind of a carefully crafted scene, right? The people have to be in just the right spot relative to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, relative to the cameraman, relative to the zoom, you know, the field of view it's trying to take in. Uh, to you know to frame the scene properly and stuff and you what you would imagine is if the if the cameraman right there uh, Were to stand up right if the cameraman were to stand up or any either of those two guys were to change their position in any type of meaningful way uh, That whole illusion would be broken, right? So again just to drive that point home of uh, Again, it's kind of we're all dealing with anything anytime. We're talking about games We're talking about kind of a carefully crafted and fine-tuned kind of forced perspective uh, that gets all these cool uh, bells and whistles humming together, right? Now you guys might be wondering where some of that other footage is that I showed uh, on the uh, with the trailer. I wasn't trying to do like a gotcha or anything. It was just my uh, my thinking changed as I was as I was making this because I initially that same thing, type of thing of the uh, of the things misaligning. My first thought was that it's possible that um, that the there's a little bit of a uh, fish tailing going on uh like the back end of the weapons kind of coming out coming out of alignment with the camera and um if you're anything anybody has any uh time behind reticles or something uh red dots or something like that you'll know that they kind of the way they project um, they kind of follow they kind of track with with your with your um uh, with your own view angle right so that's kind of what was what i was trying to show in those uh in those clips but as i kind of developed my thinking and realized that's not what's going on uh, i took those out but uh but I'll put I'll put links in the um, in the description there for you guys to go check out those videos if anybody likes that kind of stuff they're they're pretty cool pretty cool takes um, and the rest was I kind of had a, I had some stuff where I went out and did some FOV comparisons uh, for other games um, I'll probably throw that out there as like a like an extended take or something as a separate little release later because I don't want to get this one I tend to be long in the tooth where I'm trying to keep this uh, trying to keep this nice and nice and tight so I need to shut up right now but it, so anyway thanks thanks for watching thanks for tuning in I appreciate you uh, be sure to like share subscribe all that kind of jazz uh, but anyway you guys and gals take care and I'll see you next time adios